discoverability and accessibility of South African journals and to improve the quality of South African research output and support the development of policy frameworks in the area of founded research. She also received an electronic publishing trust award for her outstanding contribution to the promotion of open access in developing countries. And that is my colleague and manager, Susan Felsman. Last but not least is Mr. Bunamelo Muloi. This man is a champion of AI at SIA. SIA is an artificially intelligent social media advertising platform. The service uses artificial intelligence to deliver mass hyper-personalized and targeted communication. I think today I am in good company. We are going to begin our conversations, but first, perhaps let me allow my colleagues to say good morning to you. Good morning, colleagues. Um, it is really um, very nice to see you on board and attending um, this webinar. Uh, we're a small group, so my invitation would be to um, actually encourage you that this should be an interactive um, webinar. Um, we're all really building the road as we go and, and we learn out of our mistakes um, that you will see um, in, in what we actually present this morning. So um, it is a new field for all. And um, it, is, it is important that we just share notes, um, especially if we consider the pandemic we are in currently and that physical um, presence is not always possible. Um, but I'm curious to see and to learn um, how we can actually unpack um, this particular subject field. It's quite exciting times on the other hand. Um, so that is very important. Um, Tepe, would you allow me just to say two words about ASIF perhaps? Or would... Please go ahead, Sue. We would like to know a little bit about the Academy of Science. What is it and what do you do? Well, thank you very much. Um, you know, we don't often get uh, actually time to talk about the Academy of Science of South Africa. And especially for those who have joined us this morning, that also might actually be sort of in their mind, the, well, who's this ASIF and what are they doing? So ASIF, as we call it very shortly, and you can see my background just says ASIF, ASIF, ASIF. It stands for the Academy of Science of South Africa. Um, so we're the only academy that's officially recognized by the government of South Africa. Uh, we were established by Act of Parliament in um, 2001 to, pro to produce evidence-based scientific advice. And I think that's very important. I think especially in, in our COVID times, um, when our president actually refers to his, his expert panel and he consults them regularly, um, I think this is a very good example of how science can, uh, can uh, benefit and inform um, government to make very important um, decisions, um, especially just to, to, to look at the, at the, um, at the at COVID-19 and how they should um, mitigate sort of the spread there, thereof, etc. So this is an excellent example of how science could play a role in government decision making. So the key objective then for the Academy is to promote and apply scientific thinking in the service of society. And I hope this is the, the morning that we actually get um, society together. Society in its broadest sense, it's like publics. Who are the publics? It's very broad. So this act actually provides us a, a very nice framework and where we can promote science in public, uh, the promotion of public interest in and awareness of science and science education. So it falls really squarely into our remit to um, promote science and to engage um, via science engagement. We were very fortunate, um, and I say fortunate, uh, because uh, as, as part of our government, we have to plan in, in a five-year cycle. So our new strategic plan from 2020 to 21 to 2024, 25, um, proposes to profile and improve on the ASAP brand within the NSI landscape by focusing and refocusing its activities on a number of issues, but of which one is very important in that science engagement. Um, ASAF aligns its science engagement strategy with the Department of Science and Innovation, which has set the tone 
for what we actually have to do and how we have to direct our activities. Um, so over to you again, Tepo. I hope that gives us background why ACID is tackling this subject this morning. And I think it's twofold, mainly because um, it's definitely squarely in our remit, but also because um, COVID-19 pandemic has made us aware that we have to look at other things um, to promote science. Um, and that, that physical contact, et cetera, is quite problematic. And what is it that we can do and we should learn from our mistakes? Um, thank you, Tepa, over to you. Thank you, Susan. Um, thank you for telling us a little bit about the academy because most people think the academy is a school or it is a higher education institution. So it always helps to get uh, you know, spaces and platforms like this to just to talk a little bit about what it is. We have Edbook in the house. Chris, can you please tell us a little bit about what Edbook is? What do you do? Please unmute yourself. Please unmute yourself. Okay. Um, Mr. Majeke, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, about Edbook, um, Edbook, most people think Edbook is, is a bookshop. <laughs> um, Edbook is a media house. Um, in full is educational book. Um, so as an organization, our primary goal is to empower, assist aspiring journalists, um, business communications, international communications and public relations officers, and also multimedia IT uh, students by appointing them from different universities and communities uh, for internships programs um, across uh, the country and offer them the local and international uh, working experience uh, through the following platforms, uh, www.edbook.co.za uh, and um, our international partner, which is www.africaconnectonline.com. So, and, and again, we also have um, a department, media department, where we go around, um, collect content, content on the ground, especially for, for, for learners, uh, because of, um, you know, it, it's not easy for, for, for some learners to get information like National Science Week. So we, we, we do that for them. We pride ourselves, we go out there on the ground together with the, 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 the students, the internship um, uh, students, we go out there and collect content for them, put it on the digital platform and, and share and also promote the positivity in our schools because you know media. Uh, media will always paint our schools uh, with the black paint and it's not right. So we saw a gap that, you know what, let's go out there and, and, and start collecting content from different schools and also promote science engagement and then uh, promote positive content uh, uh, in our schools and then broadcast it. So basically, in an nutshell, that's what, that's what Edbook does. Thank and then also, uh, yeah, also, also we, 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 we started this organization back in, in 2040. And, and, and currently, um, I'm, I'm South African uh, Man of the Year Award winner in media. So we've been doing a great job. <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow. Thank you so much, Edbook. Um, it is interesting to know that there are organizations like yourself that are yeah. pushing positivity in difficult times that we are going through as a country. Thank you very much. Tell us about SIA. What is this organization that pushes artificial intelligence? Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for the opportunity to, to be on this platform and the wonderful introductions, Mr. Majake, and to your team and Ed Book. Um, nice to meet you all. Um, our company name is actually Blue Cloud AI. Blue Cloud AI is a multimedia communication and advertising slash marketing company using AI with 100% young black ownership. So we are very much local and flying our flag high. SIA is one of our flagship AI technologies and continues to advance in machine learning, marking its 10 year to date. So SIA intelligently you know, uses social media advertising to offer brands the opportunity to listen into and respond to consumers' real-time micro moments, behaviors, and conversations across all social media platforms. 
partnering with SIA um, just gives that crucial advantage to not only intercept you know, the communications that are going out there, which is very vital, but goes a step further to actually respond to those conversations as and when they happen, which ultimately drives your reach, your engagement, as we were talking about it earlier through Susan as well, um, that the science fraternity aims to get across all customers or the targeted audiences. This is done through um, intelligent algorithms um, and to deliver 100% relevant communication to that audience. So the AI continues to learn and deliver um, these communication strategies beyond any human inserted algorithms. And that is the power of our AI technology. So in, in brief, just introducing that, that is how I'd say we'll kick off this meeting. Thank you so much. This is very interesting and very exciting, I must say. Um, when you talk algorithms, you reminded me of mathematics. And I know that when <laughs> you talk algorithm in the space of technology, you are talking about something most likely related to what we used to teach or learn in mathematics. Thank you very much, uh, Asaf. Thank you very much, Edbook. And thank you very much, Blue Cloud AI. Now, I have met all of you and I've worked with all of you in science engagement events and projects. Now, I want you to tell me briefly about your outstanding science engagement program. What was it and where was it and why was it outstanding for you? Please keep it brief because we have bigger issues to discuss. So maybe let me begin with Susan. Susan, what I, I have been with you to many, uh, uh, many provinces and we have pushed the science engagement. What was the most outstanding for you and why was it outstanding? Please unmute yourself, Susan. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> As if I don't do this regularly. <laughs> um, um, thank you, colleagues. Um, so what was the outstanding one for me was definitely the one that we did um, in Graaf Reinet. And because of various reasons, and that was really a team approach. And, and I really, if, if I think about it now, um, I think that we really hit it on the spot at that time because we had the Department of Basic Education involved. We had um, the Education Department within the uh, municipal um, um, region. We had them involved. We had businesses involved. Um, we had the funding involved. Um, who, and, and we had ourselves involved. So there were a whole team that actually contributed to the success of this and everybody pulled together and made it possible for us to actually function that week. Um, very large schools, many schools, um, large groups that we had to deal with. It also showed us technological wise, if we talk about IT and if we talk about ICTs, what is it that we need to function on that level? Because as you rightly said, um, Craft Renet is a very interesting town. It has many um, businesses and initiatives and, and organizations um, being involved to uplift Graf Reinet as a town. Um, there are many tourism attractions like the Big Flag. Um, there are the Montego um, dark or animal food nowadays that I have diversified quite a lot and their involvement. And um, also the Rupert Foundation who is um, funding quite a lot of initiatives in that town, especially in education and the upliftment of a community. Um, then you also have just the town, just the people, just the citizens who care um, for their learners and are extremely concerned. And then, of course, the ICT solutions, which we, which I will embroider a little bit about um, in, in perhaps later questions. Um, so I think that was very important and just showed me the team approach. But it also showed me very important and very relevant for today. And that is that physical presence. Um, is very important 
but through ICTs and through technology, we can bring all the things from the outside to the inside to the learners as well. I'll stop there. Thank you, um, Sepu. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Susan. We were able to bring content from far and wide, brought it to a very small, isolated community for engagement. Chris, what was your most outstanding engagement program and why was it so? Um, yes, you know, for me, um, National Science Week, uh, for me, it's an outstanding program, not forgetting um, Quest, for me, and again, Quest Magazine, for me, it's a program because of I'm able to extract information and engage with the learners. So National Science Week, for me, it's an outstanding one because of um, they enable us to go out there to give us themes and be able to go out there on the ground. Uh, for that three days, we engage with a lot of learners. Um, um, we engage with them. And then after three days, we, we are able to go visit schools. Um, I, re I remember back in, in 2017, I think it was, the theme was um, um, enhancing tourism um, oh, yeah. using sites. You remember that? Yeah. Um, we were able to go to a school in Pretoria it, it, it was in Pretoria, in, in Mabopani. I will, I will not name the, the school. Uh, we got there and then we found that, uh, we interviewed the kids and then we found that the, the, the grade 11s, grade 12, they don't know anything about National Science Week. So for me, it was, it was I felt so proud uh, to bring that to them and also give them um, tasks based on, on the theme. And it, it was nice to see the kids being creative, um, they were, they were busy developing and coming up with ideas of, of manufacturing passes <laughs> using different uh, 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 fuel. Like it was, it was so nice. It was so nice. And then, um, and again, the reason why it was so nice for me, it was, it's because of um, imagine grade 12s not knowing anything about National Science Week and then you are there to give them this information from National Science Week. So it was fulfilling. Um, yeah, so that was my, my greatest moment. Thank you so much, Chris. I remember seeing you rushing up and down with your yeah. cameras in Port Elizabeth and you were trying to capture the moments of everybody trying to engage with different publics. Um, it was a very fulfilling thing to see. And you were yeah. surrounded by students. But also I remember Mr. Muloy um, in the Eastern Cape as well. I think it was Makanda, what's now called Makanda. We were in um, uh, one of the festivals there in Grahamstown. I remember seeing you handling different publics coming and asking very difficult questions. And we would retire and have lunch and you'd be so tired. But remind me again, what was your most outstanding activity or project of the science, of uh, um, science engagement? Well, thank you, sir. And you, you're just recapturing those moments um, quite nicely. Um, I, I, I personally have, have a vast background and still growing in it when it comes to science engagement. And what a perfect example that you use there as well. So in, in growing in, in, in this um, platform, one realized that needs, I need to plug myself into a progressive industry that um, aims to promote you know, engagement effectively. And which is how we came about and with our team um, using SIA. So, um, like Chris said earlier, you know, having having those those learners around you, communicating with them, um, it's quite a huge moment. However, Susan also raised earlier that our challenges now, uh, you know, we 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 can't have the luxury of being on foot and actually addressing those crowds effectively, given the pandemic that we are in. So. Uh, one of our, I would say, greatest um, accounts right now was through Gauteng Health, for example, just to bring an example through, through the science itself. And their biggest challenge was informing people 
and just eradicating the misinformation about the vaccinations that are currently going on. So they then deployed our services and to date they're still using us to make sure that they are right at the point of information when it comes out. You know, I remember someone said during um, the campaigns whilst they were running and said, newspapers, print media should be called old newspapers because <laughs> when something is news, it's when in, in our language to say, we say something that is currently trending and you always need to be at people's fingertips. And that is the advantage that we bring. And in the science world, that is the contribution that we are wanting to bring because having identified those gaps that when you talk about news, you talk about current things that are happening and you need to be in a position that you contribute with the current um, flow of information, which ultimately improves your responsiveness and contribute so much to what you are willing to achieve to your audience. So Houghton Health is our biggest achievement um, so far together with um, the, the bigger province as a whole, because they are just plugging us in in the vaccination campaigns. Um, I know that, you know, Susan raised, uh, you know, awareness being something very important. So to educate, you know, people properly about any misinformation that's going out there, and when you see information going out there on the internet of things, just know that we are somewhere a big part of it in getting the correct information out there. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Muloy. This is very helpful. Colleagues, if you have any questions, please write them on the Q&A um, so that we can be able to pick those up and uh, try to entertain those questions as we go along because we really don't have much time. So if you have a question, please write it in the comment box. We will be able to answer those questions as we continue. Um, Dr. Chris, please tell yes. me about a digital platform. What is a digital platform? You know, you know, I'm listening to Mr. Molloy there saying <laughs> old newspapers. <laughs> I think he's he just some 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 summarized it for me. <laughs> now, um, as you know, um, a, a a digital it's, for me is a very attractive service to the public. Um, mobile devices such as tablets, smartphones, with broadband network is is available anywhere, everywhere. So uh, digital is, is putting information out there um, in the digital space, in, in our phones, um, tablets. Um, you know, we, we're from um, um, analog era. So hence, hence, hence Mr. Muller is saying um, old newspapers because of right now, newspapers are closing down. Um, magazines, companies are, are closing down. Um, basically, media houses are closing down because of digital space. Um, we need to go away with this thing of using analog. Even TV is moving from analog to digital. Um, everywhere we are going in a digital space. So for me, it's that it's putting information out there to the public on their phones, um, easily accessible uh, for, for them. Yeah. So for me, it's that. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Chris. Uh, perhaps let me let me say that now that you are saying that magazines are closing down and media houses are closing down, Quest is not closing down. We are adapting and we are moving yes. into the digital space. Um, and yesterday we had a soft launch of our website. And during the National Science Week, we are going to be having a hard launch of our website. So we are moving with the times and it's yeah. very good that we have you and Mr. Molloy to assist us with what we need to be focusing on so that we get the greatest following that we can be able, especially young people who need education. Dr. Molloy, what is AI? What is artificial intelligence? Because when you talk IQ, I thought that was intelligence. Now we have AI. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> um, well, you know, just taking it to, to the basis of, of, of you know, of, of, of the aim of this webinar, focusing on ICT, 
and how it, it you know, it'll help the science fraternity drive its message across effectively. Um, the basis of ICT is just using digital technology to communicate. And, you know, I'll just start just a little back to and use this webinar as a perfect example, you know, um, to, to, to speak um, in, in alignment to what ICT is. This is a digital space and we are communicating, you know. So artificial intelligence, you know, is, is basically the simulation of that human element of intelligence, you know, but processing it through machines. And this is through machine learning as one key component. SIA is exemplary of this much needed AI technology, which is able to continuously learn, adapt and interact with all targeted audience with the most important element, which is real time, which is what matters most. So this is what I can say AI means to us. Wow, thank you very much. This is very helpful. Um, maybe this is time that I give over to Susan and Ina um, to tell us about science engagement activities and the value of ICT in that space. Over to you, Ina and Susan. Thanks, Tipu. Um, Susan, shall I go first? Um, I think, um, you know, working with IT is a passion of mine and transferring ICT skills to, to others um, and <laughs> it comes with, along with that. So um, thanks to Tipu, I've been involved with National Science Week since 2017. And if I may allow, I just want to take you through a photo journey of some of the science engagement initiatives we've been involved with, with um, along with the Sun and Sepu. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, just so you can see what it is um, I'm talking about. Um, one of the science engagement initiatives very close to my heart, um, and which I have fond memories of, is the outreach we had um, among grade 11 and 12 learners in the Delft community in the Western Cape. And those of you who, uh, who know Delft uh, would know that it's a very poor and um, low socioeconomic um, um, environment in which the learners have to grow up. Some of them without parents, um, gangsterism, etc. common. And um, it's no, no, Nothing strange for a child to walk to school and being robbed on his way to school or the child's mum or dad uh, fighting the previous night, um, um, you know, and, and uh, to grow up amongst those difficult conditions can be challenging. Challenging. So we partnered with In The Cloud, a small MICT CETA uh, private organization, Subnet, the Blue Bus Community Ministry, Sindel High School in Delft, Western Cape, and we've put together a program to train grade 11 and 12 um, learners on how to use computers in a responsible way, how to find entrusted information, not just any information. Um, fake news um, is everywhere. So key that um, they should learn how to use technology as a tool um, and to access quality information. So we also, um, I took them through how to start your own business, how to develop a business plan, compile, prepare your CV, design a logo for your business, everything you need to start your own business. And they came up with stunning ideas. Um, Tepo also presented a webinar on science as a career. He um, shared the Quest magazine and challenged learners with exciting math problems. And on the last day um, of this course, this one week event, the learners were um, exposed to role play. They had to dress up and um, prepare themselves um, as for a formal, in uh, to be interviewed by potential funders um, or in the form of role play. So they presented their business cases and they had to convince potential funders to invest money. Uh, they also had to um, evaluate each other and apply critical thinking. So the funders who were the teachers and the headmaster were all speeches because of the quality level on which learners delivered and questions learners asked one another. So these just some of the 
letters from this um, outreach and the comments. And I, I specifically want to highlight the fourth um, comment, the third and the fourth comment. My experience is feedback from the learners. My experience was a great one because I did not only get to learn about computer skills, but I also got to interact with different people from different backgrounds. And that gave me knowledge to accept people from wherever they come from. So this is about more than ICT and more um, um, and about more than just science. It's also a bit about the human side of things. Another one said it was very fun and educational. I've learned so much computer skills that I can apply in my school work. The ability to work with computers is really going to make my life and school work a lot easier and manageable. And this school's computers were stolen. Um, and so therefore we had to rent computers as part of this um, training session. A second um, initiative was the the first National Science Week, we, Sefu and myself, uh, visited Mabozwana the first time for me, and, and we were supposed to drive seven hours only. I think we ended up driving 20, 22 hours. We got lost completely, but it was part of the journey and the learning process. We got to know each other so well. We uh, presented a digital skills program in partnership with the VSI. We provided some basic funding, ASAF in the cloud and the University of Pretoria. Um, we focused on training 11 librarians at the Mabaswana Public Library. And it also included a webinar, exposing them to webinars and demonstrating to the librarians that they can bring expert, experts and expert knowledge into the library from wherever it is in, in the rest of the world. Um, so they can invite any expert or scientist to, to, to present webinars in that remote areas. Um, so just a few photos from this initiative um, again, and there's a group of 11 librarians. They had a lovely public library building, a lovely computer library, but no connectivity. And also the infrastructure not well maint maintained, so um, like basics, toilets not, not functioning. And being from remote villages, the distance to the public library makes it difficult to reach a public libraries from the various villages. So, and I remember we said to each other, myself and Sepu, that rather than spending six rand on a taxi to go to the public library, one would rather spend it on bread if, if that's your first priority and your first need. But I've learned that in both examples, in both the Delft and the um, Botswana example, the learners and the librarians all were hungry to learn. Um, I think in a way, in a sense, they so neglected because of being so remote and, um, in, um, and because of where they are positioned. Um, the librarians from Botswana drove very far to make use of this opportunity. They work at four o'clock in the morning to be on time. And um, because there's not many such opportunities in remote parts of the country. I've achieved so much in so little time and with so little resources. And their confidence grew as they saw how easy it was to use digital tools. They lived motivated and confident to transfer practical skills back to the community. The community. This was followed by Career Feda at Mithilini and um, where Tepu presented and also myself. And once again, it was about more than just science and IT. It was about bridging a borders, breaking down silos, um, connecting with people. I remember I wanted a photo with, with the learners and initially they were hesitant. And then one very shy lady um, had a, a bag and I, I recognized the logo on the bag and I started talking to her. And then I asked her if I can take a photo with her. And suddenly all these girls broke out in smiles and they just wanted to pose for a photo with me. So for me, it was more about um, um, also connecting with the learners and, and giving them hope um, to, to, for the future. And Susan, I don't know, this, uh, this part is about Graf and Ned. I don't know if you would like us to play this video. Do you want to say something about it? Susan? Susan, please unmute yourself. I think if you can throw in me with something this morning, you should. <laughs> um, sorry, you know, I, you know, I think by close out of this webinar, we can play this. 
Um, I think this was a very important marketing tool for us in going forward, just to show sort of the impact and the value of, of this, an outreach um, occasion. Um, so maybe we should just hold on to it. Um, Ina, would you like to say something more about it? Oh, no, except that um, uh, we, we visited five different schools. Some of them were well resourced and others had very little. But, but once again, the eagerness and the hunger to learn more um, was, um, you know, very, um, it was for us very special. So nothing on, uh, more on this. We can play this video at the end. Um, shall we move to National Science Week 2019, Sebu, or take a break here? I think, I think, you know, you, you have done so much uh, to explain to us um, basically um, the space we have been involved in as the Academy of Science. And I think what Susan is saying is true. Perhaps let's move the video towards the end so that our, our viewers can be, and, uh, you know, engage us on what they see and in the process. Um, may, maybe let me put uh, Chris and uh, uh, Budamelo in the spot with regards to what their organizations are putting on the table to support and to improve what we are doing in the space of science engagement. Perhaps let me start with Chris. And maybe, maybe let me say this in advance, Chris. Chris, Chris is also in radio. So he, he will leave us before we finish this um, session because he also has a slot uh, in radio. I think it's on a daily basis from this to that time. And so that is why I'm prioritizing him so that when the time comes, he's able to just jump off and leave. So my apologies, Dr. Mulohi, I, I am not taking you for granted at all. <laughs> Over to you, Brakris. Um, what is your organization offering? to enhance and to support science engagement? Uh, okay, um, so we, we train um, students in, in skills uh, development, um, um, science journalism students, um, yeah, and TV radio presenting um, uh, students. And yeah, they go out there, like I said, um, we, we, we on the ground, we on the ground, hard at work on the ground. Um, trying to um, improve the science engagement, especially in, in schools, because um, that's where we should <laughs> uh, empower. That's where we should empower, because we need to, we, you know, science, science engagement, we need to make it um, attractive to, to the kids. Um, it shouldn't just be about going to the labs and, and, <laughs> and experimenting or in a book. So we should make it um, an, uh, attractive to 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 this uh, learners. And then um, the, the, what we do in, in, in our broadcasting media, um, we cover topics such as um, social intervention in the community. We address social issues, engage the communities, and promote positive culture. Um, school projects. Uh, we introduce innovative uh, projects that are solution unique to the demands in school. Um, career exhibition, educational conferences. I like these ones because of that's where we go deep in 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 science engagement. We got academic and career related information for learners uh, who. who who hardly get this information? So yeah, that's 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 what we do in in Edbook, um, 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 Edbook organization, and we, it that doesn't just end at Edbook platform. We also, like I said, we have an international partner called Africa Connect Online. So Africa Connect Online also takes this information, broadcast it in Europe. Um, we have an office in Canada. We have an, uh, another office in New York. Uh, but this organization, uh, this media house started in Nigeria. So Morocco, we also put um, our content there. So we, we broadcast it all over the world so that people can see what we do here in, in, in Africa. Yeah. After this uh, webinar, Ina is going to share this link with you so that you can share it with Africa AI. We want to yeah. see ourselves in conversations with people in Europe uh, in Nigeria, yes. in Morocco, and all over the world. Um, it will be good to see that. Dr. Moloy, what are you bringing to the table? This is a very difficult question in relationships. 
But in this relationship of science engagement, what is Blue Cloud AI bringing to the table? What are you offering us to enhance and to support science engagement? Well, thank you again. Um, Hugh, yeah, yeah there, there are quite, quite some difficult questions, Mr. Majake. However, um, I, like, I like how Chris has put it. And moreover, because you know we, we just bolster everything that is, is currently in place. And when he speaks of, of, you know, of international reach, um, it reminds me um, to make you aware as well that CI is global. So it is a platform that can be plugged in anywhere in the world and give you that value. Uh, bringing it home, let's just make, um, you know, an example about the upcoming National Science Week. Um, the current marketing platforms that are used, for example, they, they allow the message to go out to the public, however, with a hope to reach the masses, but not with the actual certainty that the desired numbers will be reached. So there is therefore, thereafter, you know, after the, the, the whole campaign has run and the initiative has come to a close, there is a delayed, if at all, you know, impact follow-up, you know, from the science fraternity itself with regard to the audience that it interacted with. So this means that there is, you know, continued investment in these wonderful initiatives, but without the much needed follow-up, you know, that, you know, aims to, 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 to measure the impact of these wonderful initiatives. Now, this is where we come in. SIA is best positioned to bridge that gap, you know, as it will immediately enhance that community management through responsiveness, you know, heightened engagement and the, the, the desired, you know, impact analysis with regards to the return on investment. Having said that, I think, let me just try and share my screen as well. Um, just to give one example that resonates to the audience that you spoke of, Mr. Majake earlier, which is your youth. You know, we are we are currently um, engaging with um, NASPAS, you know. NASPAS is, is a youth-based organization which, you know, drives our learners to, to, to make sure that they get the much needed service. Um, at the time that they need it. I just ask for you to confirm whether you are able to clearly see my screen. Yes, we can. Fantastic. So what NSFS, um, if you, you, you just give me a few seconds to, to talk you through it, it was experiencing a backlog with its service queries, which were too huge, you know, for humans to handle. We know this to be quite, you know, a, a, a big problem. So um, when we spoke about, you know, in your introduction, uh, Mr. Majaka, when you say hyper-personalized, you know, um, responses, which we call it uh, in our uh, language, we, we call it the sniper approach, you know, going for, for that particular person. So it focuses on the specific users who ask the questions as opposed to, you know, any sponsored post that you would get um, even that most institutions are actually using, which is your traditional um, media. So looking at an example, for example, um, you've got Paul Juliet Hodza and posting to add my says, good afternoon, I need a temporary password for my e-wallet, please. Can you help me reset my e-wallet? So this, in this particular example, it was posted four hours ago and 16 seconds later, now my NESPAS responds. How does my NESPAS respond? It's responding through SIA. So now it takes them exactly to their query that they want. It, res it responds to exactly what they are saying at that particular time. Whereas if you, know, you take your normal bots, for example, your normal bots are pre-programmed so they cannot think or align their responses to the actual request that 
any individual would be putting. And then you have another example um, right to your right, but I just wanted to demonstrate the hyper-personalization. Now, we go further because we are local and SIA is able to communicate in our local languages. You know, today you find your youth that is communicating in, in it's not even called a language because it's not in, in our traditional ways of talking. Um, your venek, um, your, 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 your slang. And as SIA continues to interact with that audience, and then it adopts to their language and starts responding to them in that language, you know? So I'm hoping that you, when it comes to, to, to interacting with your youth and, you know, how, how I would say loose they are with their language, because that's where we are, that will be an added value, you know, to, to, to engaging with them and speaking to them at their level as well. Uh, I hope that Sia <laughs> is, is can, you can see that value through using our platforms as well, Mr. Majake. Well, um, this is very, very, very helpful. In fact, I hope my colleagues um, are watching so that we are able to push our engagement in the space and in the um, social media space more, more directly and um, more personalized because there are questions that come usually from whatever experiment that a colleague is doing. And there's a learner who wants to know specifically what did you put in that beaker? And you find, as you say, the bots are pre-programmed, they will respond and the response will be the same for everybody, but everybody has a different question. So here a colleague, Ndate Deboho Habeli, is saying, please share the details of all the panelists because we are learning together. So I am asking that Ndate Mulo, Ilwen, and Ndate Chris, please write your emails on the uh, comment box so that people can be able to connect with you when they need your services. Um, so please do me that favor so that my colleagues don't come to me and say, um, who are those people? Please write there so that they are able to, please do it now as we, as we speak. Now, this is the time where we start engaging with our people. Um, I'm wondering if there are questions from um, attendees. Do you have any questions? for Chris, for Susan, for Ina, for Bunamela, or myself, um, so that we can try to respond to, to them as they come in. Um, there is a question from Miss Mbava. She says, how do you make sure that the promotion of ICT and science engagement reaches out to, the, to most if not all disadvantaged school communities like townships and the rural areas. What stands out in my view in your presentations is that you work directly with schools to empower youth in particular, which is good, but how do you engage the education district, province and national to make science engagement fashionable and it reaches out to all schools in a district so as to benefit those learners that are disadvantaged, especially in terms of resources. So this is a very important question. Um, how do we reach everybody? Maybe let me ask Susan to assist in this one. Um, thank you very much. Ayanda, thank you very much for that question. I think we grapple with that question every day. Um, Quest magazine was mentioned just a little bit earlier on and, um, you, you know, we always have to really evaluate the situation of, of all our systems, meaning the postal services, um, but also because of this particular problem is how do we reach out to rural schools and ensure that they also benefit from the National Science Week or just science engagement in, in general. It, it remains a very big problem uh, because the core or the or sort of the, the few that sort of assist in, in actually um, 
helps us to convey the message of course is technology and, and you're absolutely right um, even Graaf Rijnet for that matter has no fiber there it has to be waved in by radio waves the, the connectivity which is also highly problematic because everybody can jump on that wave to actually get access and that limits your access then to the schools um, that you cannot ensure enough bandwidth for schools to engage um, via um, technology to, to the science engagement um, um, effort. Uh, I, I, we did find, and I want to emphasize that again, that a team approach is extremely important, but you need somebody on the ground in that actual municipality, in that area, in that village, that will work with you. It, it's almost like an indaba, <laughs> which we had to have. You talk to the DBE, you talk to the mu municipal um, people right there. Um, there are s all sorts of um, issues when you go to villages, which and um, which you have to sort of uh, mitigate. You have to consult and bring everybody on board. Tell them why are you doing this. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. It took us about a year just to negotiate a proper um, spot that particular week um, in, in, um, in that town. So one needs to advocate the need for children to understand and for learners to, to be prepared to go in the outside world. I think that's the one thing that really amazed us is, is sort of um, the learners are really not prepared, right? 11 to 12 are very uninformed. Um, about careers and what they can do. Um, and then it's important for the science engager to understand the difficulties that these villages and these rural areas are actually facing. And then to prioritize and to set up your meetings to um, actually engage a spread of people. You, you know, sometimes we actually go beyond our remit. You realize, um, you know, here we are, we are assets. And we have a very particular focus and a very particular lens that we look at things. But it really necessitated us to think deep and hard. Who should we engage? It, it was citizens. It was um, people um, that deals with the community often. It was um, teachers. It was some learners to get the input. It was businesses. So um, it, it, it is, it is, it's a hard work. It's hard work to actually get that buy-in and to see the need um, for that. Um, sorry, Tippi, if I just made just one thing and then, then I'll um, leave it for, for some more questions. And that is, we talk about ICTs here today. And if we really think, what is the penetration of the internet into South African and rural areas? Um, it's little. Um, it is, it's really few and far between even the efforts of, of um, having fiber or, or whatever. But the biggest penetration of devices in South Africa are mobiles. So we, we have to think because every child almost, doesn't matter where he is, has a mobile device. And we know that um, mobile providers and, and, and um, data providers through, through mobile services have a particular way in how they actually sell these bundles um, and data bundles, et cetera. And I think there's a very broad spectrum um, that we have to sort of interrogate um, to ensure um, that we actually reach every learner in every part um, of the country. Thank you, Tepo. Thank you very much, Susan. This is very helpful. Um, I am reminded of Umshabuya Lingana, where we visited with Ina. The year before Ina joined me, we had to meet the chiefs of the area because they were very skeptical of these people who are driving uh, fancy cars coming into their community to talk to their people. So the first stop was the chief. And when we got there, we thought it was going to be a short meeting where we introduce ourselves and just tell them why we're here. And we found that two of the chiefs were retired professors of the University of Zululand. And when we got there, we were engaging them because they had concerns and programs for their people. So it just shows that communities are so diversified. However, they need to be engaged at a very personal level. Um, it's very important to realize that townships 
um, and villages, the um, previously disadvantaged communities have a very special place in science engagement because they are prioritized in terms of resources. Most of the programs are for previously disadvantaged communities. But in the process, we must never forget that our youth is everywhere. So as we go to the previously disadvantaged, we also need to put, even in, the, in a very small number, the previously advantaged so that they are not left behind. Remember, we are trying to push an agenda of reconciliation, but we are also trying to capacitate our youth to go forward and to be able to have capacity to do things uh, better. Please forgive me. It's Mehabed. Mehabed, uh, please accept my, my apologies. Um, Dr. Chris, um, do you have any response to uh, this question? We still have that one question about reaching previously a disadvantaged community. Yeah, um, you know, it's so difficult, as um, Mr. Sen said. It's so difficult. But for me, my experience is, you know, the parents, they've played a big role in terms of um, allowing me to engage with the learners in different schools. Like SGB, school governing body, um, um, they, they play an important role. They, 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 they made it easy for me um, as, as ed book to engage with the learners, different learners, uh, be it in Devon, be it in Northwest Mahiking, be it in Hamanskral, I was able to engage with the learners through school governing bodies. They, they understood uh, better because of going through our education uh, system, it's not easy. Um, yeah, especially now as at book, back then in 2014, people didn't see the vision, but now, it, it, people start, they start to understand what we are doing because of things are moving to, <laughs> to, to, to digital. So yeah, I would say school governing bodies, they did great for me. Thank you very much, Dr. Chris. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think that was the question that we had. And if you look at the comment box, our panelists have shared their contacts and I see uh, Edbook has also shared their website. We have shared our website for the Quest magazine and Sia has shared, Blue Cloud AI have shared their website. So you can engage us, but you can also visit our websites so that you can see what we do. Perhaps this is the time where I ask each one of you just parting shots and then over to Ina with our video. Let me start with, uh, with you, Chris, because I know you might just uh, decide to leave in a few seconds. <laughs> so what are your parting shots? Um, any closing remarks? Yeah, any closing uh, remarks is that um, let's support each other. Um, this is a new space. Digital is a new space. Um, let's not uh, think like we know it all. Um, let's have more uh, engagement, even if it's not science. Let's just have open uh, conversations about digital space, um, about uh, artificial intelligence. Um, most people in our government, they don't even know what is artificial intelligence. Our mothers don't know uh, people like Mr. Muloi. Let's uh, keep on talking about this thing. Let's keep on engaging. Um, let's uh, all assist each other. Even our participants drop your, your your suggestions, we welcome suggestions so that we can grow together. Yeah, for me, yes. And then this is a great platform. Um, Asaf Quest Magazine continue to do this. Um, we need this in, in our country. We need conversation. We need to keep it going, um, especially in our communities. Thank you. Dr. Muloy, closing remarks, sir. Um, thank you so, so, so much. Uh, you know, um, Chris speaks so well, and you know he just covers the most important of things. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, I think just briefly, uh, local is like you know they always say. <laughs> so, in as much as we we can come up with many other terms, 
homes, you know, that, you know, speak to that charity does begin at home. And, you know, that speaks to my point of collaboration. We, we, collaboration can take us so far. As, as individuals, we can only reach to a certain level. But once we start collaborating and opening ourselves up, particularly to the part where we have the expertise uh, in our own backyards, um, we must make it a point that we always pour into each other's spaces where you know, we can always help each other at, uh, at, at our point of strength. And through collaboration, whoever you know, can come up with a solution that speaks to address a problem, but perhaps only half the problem, when we come together, we are able to come up with you know, a turnkey solution that is aimed to deliver the anticipated message. And through this platform, you know, to educate, to make aware, and to promote science. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Boulogne. Um, Sue, please give us your closing remarks. Thank you, Tepu. Um, thank you for my two previous speakers. I think you're raising some very important points there. I just want to sort of um, be a little bit more practical and that is to urge um, people who will participate in the National Science Week, uh, certainly for ASIF. We can see it's mainly driven um, via the internet. It will be webinars. It will be very short documentaries, which will be broadcasted. So now we actually have to focus now on social media and other uh, mechanisms to, to um, reach out to our publics. But that poses another problem. Um, I just want to sort of urge um, people on, on this webinar is please have a look when you set up your, your, um, your technology driven um, science engagement effort is make sure that it actually um, talks to um, mobile devices. Um, so many times I go into the mobiles and you can see it has not been um, specifically set up for a mobile device or a tablet um, or even your computer, um, your connectivity etc. It unfortunately will rely this time around on all these issues. So it, it, and I agree, now it starts um, pushing our buttons to be really technological savvy, is when we promote science via these mechanisms and devices. Um, just as a last um, idea that, that we really have to be, be careful and ensure that through all devices this can be reached and heard and seen. Um, otherwise our efforts will be futile as well. Thank you, Tepo. Thank you so much, uh, Susan. I will then um, leave Inna to, to take us over to the closure of this um, webinar. But it's very important that we realize that the development of any country uh, depends entirely on science. Uh, whether you are talking of poverty eradication, whether you are talking of communication, whether you are talking of research um, that enhances medicine, education, economics, we need science. And I think there is this very limited understanding of what science is. There are people who remove themselves from science and they will say, no, I'm not a scientist, I'm a historian. Is history not a science? When people speak of science, they think of the natural sciences. And as the academy, we are looking at science from a very broad spectrum. So I thought, I thought it would be important to just bring this through in our conversation that no one is closed out. In our conversation, when we say science, we are speaking to everybody. Ina, over to you. Um, thank you, Tepu. Um, regarding the National Science Week uh, we had in 2019, I just want to mention we connected um, people from all over the world, from actually from five different countries, to engage with learners in um, Humansdorp and Jeffreys Bay. So, and it, we allowed the learners to engage with, with other youth across the world, um, from I think from Poland, Germany, etc. So, what I want, want to say and end off with is that the sky is the limit. Don't be hesitant to reach out to a scientist, no matter even if it's Elon Musk. Don't don't be afraid to drop an email and ask him to 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 present um, 
uh, to the class or, or, or any person you can think of. We also developed the African Scientists Directory, trying to um, collect all the details of African scientists on the continent. And we need more collaboration with fellow Africans. And um, in 2019, we worked with Kenneth and um, a few schoolgirls from um, Kenya um, engaged with the the learners from Jeffreys Bay and Humansdorp. And now um, we're going to play you the video from the National Science Week 2018. So if you allow me to share my screen, um, just going to go there, um, share, and play it. Uh, inner um, micro level orientations in the sociology of science and in the sociology of international development and social change have alluded to the connection between science and development because national economic growth and scientific capacity, which is knowledge production technology development, technical 
innovation and scientific discovery uh, are empirically associated with each other. This is by Cattell's in 2000. So it is very important for us to realize that we can grow as a unit. And if we look at science, we should look at it as an enabler of national development. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. And thank you very much to the panel, Mrs. Susan Felsman, Mrs. Ina Smith, Mr. Bonamelo Muloi, and Mr. Chris Womakwe. And thank you very much to Henriette uh, Wachena, who is not with us uh, this morning, who was very helpful in the organization of this. And thank you to the ASAF staff for your support, to the SIA staff, uh, Blue, Blue IQ, Blue Cloud, uh, Blue Cloud AI staff, and also to the Edbook staff. Thank you very much for your support. And Chris, uh, please say hi to your listeners in your next uh, program on the radio this afternoon. Thank you very yeah. much for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.